Hey, welcome back to Plug and Play EV. I'm Steve, and in this one we have a special trip north of the border to check out the highly anticipated Kempower satellite station. So There's a bolt over there. The last time we came to a San Hubert was in a bolt, but this is the location. Right off Auto Route 20 on the St. Lawrence River, a good way north of Quebec City. It's the first North American Kempower site with the power modules all in that uh, orange topped Kempower colored piece to the left, and the three satellite stations spread out neatly across the parking lot. So let's go over, plug in, and check them out. And so we have seen some of these in the US, but only individual units capable of 50 kilowatts max. These are the real deal, the satellite station pushing power on a modular basis so that it pulls only the power it needs for each individual stall based on the EV that's plugged in. So it doesn't matter that a bolt plugs into this one next to me, I'm going to get the maximum that it's capable of giving me and the bolt is going to get his 50, 55 kilowatts. And uh, we have a Kona Electric and a Kia Nero EV, so we're all South Korean here for the moment. We'll see if anyone else joins in. Well, this satellite system solution is to distribute power appropriately between the different levels. So I think with the Kona and the Kia Nero EV, you're looking at around 70 to 80 kilowatts. We can pull 240, 245 on a good day. So let's see how this works out for us. So, got it to the screen, it did time out, that's my fault. It does say, looks like the RFID is out of service, use the mobile app. This is about right, we'd expect to start up 190s, and that should ramp at some point. It's uh, looking a bit less uh, than we might expect, just based on the kind of 17 to 18 minutes to 80% from 10% normally. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. This is more about kind of looking at this site, seeing what it can do. Okay, that's a little more audible now that we have delivery fans gone. So first things first, not sure this touch screen's any more responsive than the kind of charge point ones. You can get that same kind of press the button, lags a little bit. Do you have your real-time kilowatt hours energy delivered? We're kind of ramping down now for whatever reason, so Hasn't been perfect, but certainly got that power right away. So the Kona electric left, we've got the Q 
Kia Nero EV, the new model, which looks really nice, as an aside. Um, that's at 81% and only pulling 25 kilowatts, so he is only really using one brick from there, maybe two, if it goes any higher than that, but I believe they're 25 kilowatt bricks, power modules. And then you can see the distance between them there. That's a fairly long run, and it's removed to the side there, so you've got a really nice setup with pull-through parking for every stall, kind of fits every kind of vehicle, doesn't really matter how you would park or where you would go, these will retract a nice long way. We'll take a look at that. Now, it's interesting, they feel really heavy when you get them out, but they're actually quite easy to maneuver. I mean, this is a chunky cable, as you can see, to deliver all that power, but that spring coil really takes the weight or takes the effort out of maneuvering it. Like, I'm feeling it in my wrist to maneuver this, like this way, but as a Coming to the back of the pull-through stall, you see that spring-loaded arm is doing all the work and you've got a solid reach all the way to the end of the stall there and you have to assume it will go the other way. Yep, so pretty much wherever that is and you've got all the space in the world to pull through a bit further even if it doesn't quite reach, so Pretty impressive stuff there. Oh, there it goes. Did I end it myself? I was gonna actually switch over to the other one anyway, so let's see. Now it's worth noting that unlike others, where if you plug in to the one stall next to it, it may be a shared solution and you'll cut the power. This just goes to whichever it splits it based on what the vehicle's asking for. So you have arrived. I know. Show kind of how much space and maneuvering room we've got. Okay, that's what you should see. I'm pretty sure I saw that before so quickly that it didn't even register that it was a preparing to charge screen. And that fires right up. So it does look like the pricing is extremely dynamic via 10 kilowatt steps up in power. So if you're pulling way up to the high hundreds into the 200s you're going to be paying a lot more but it's per hour so it kind of looks crazy and it dynamically adjusts you see to say now that this one's pulling whatever it's going to pull this one is going down as the more and more power is sucked from the cabinet over there and we may get full whack here or as close to it as possible um it's only been on two minutes here almost but it's delivered almost four kilowatt hours and uh, at a cost of two bucks, three bucks. I don't think it's actually gonna end up working out very expensive, um, despite the hourly kind of rate being a little bit confusing. Remember it's Canadian as well, so you gotta do the math on that. But uh, this is obviously ripping through one here. I do think if we hooked up at 10%, it would then give us the 10 to 80% in about 17, 18 minutes. That does seem capable. I'm gonna go and get some more footage of the stuff here and we'll see where we are. Come 80%, seven minutes time apparently, so I better rush. They do have the electric circuit powered by Quebec Hydro, next to the diesel and propane, of course. So there we are, getting our hydroelectric power. We'll see if he completes, but again, that's not so much of a concern. I mean, you're still potentially using a charger, but it's a nice use case because he's not sucking up any of the other power to this. You know, he's using what his car is asking for, which is presumably at this point about 10, 15 kilowatts, maybe, if it's not already done. Oh, it's finished, presumably he was set to charge to 90%. In any case, he's now done. It is this single you can see how neat this is not much of a footprint at all charging power unit cpu that goes with the satellite series um really neat small footprint a lot of power obviously hasn't been landscaped or anything but it's uh it's quite quiet you can hear some of the fans going but not insanely loud to 80 percent there and pulling down to 92 so let's see if you can stop a charge a little bit more responsive 
Okay, 55, kind of neat graphics as well, 55 to 82% in 11 minutes. Again, just feel that weight, but again, it's not, not bad. <laughs> you can move it around, it's kind of bulky, so certainly got that. But uh, solidly placed in the holster. They could fall out. No, they're locked, so that's good. And there you go. Full power should be available because that one has stopped charging and is just sitting there now. And uh, these are all available. So looks like this is generally for trucks, but they've used the space for EV charging here. It's a good wide open lot. Kind of little digest of our sessions this morning um, so far. And here on the chem power station, uh, you've got the one where we didn't quite get up to full power. We got uh, 23 kilowatt hours in nine minutes, $12.92 for this one, whereas this was a bit less energy and uh, nine minutes to get that 23 kilowatt hours and almost 11 minutes to get the 23 kilowatt hours again. So I'll have to break down into those, see what you get from the session. This is the electric circuits app. This data coming from Kempile, let's see what we get from the others. I think it will tell us the same, yep. So it's telling us what we actually did, how the charge level went up, and the energy we got in kilowatt hours. So all that's very nice, that's on the electric circuit though, so you can get that on any, it doesn't have to be a chem power. But uh, it's a nice installation, you can see the benefit of this and uh, how this is going to work out. First of all, just purely by layout, you have pull-through charging stations, you have no real thought to where you park because those spring-loaded arms and the length of the cable uh, is very maneuverable really easy to shift around to almost any charge port configuration you have uh, six stalls all of which will be served as much power as the vehicle asks for up to that maximum of 500 kilowatts that uh, the site has kept that from its port power modules best in class I would say I mean obviously you've got some issues there with the touch screen if I had the nag uh, you could say the handle and connector is certainly very heavy all to be worked out but you know in general as we look at it this is the kind of thing we want to see this kind of site right off the interstate right off the auto route these are just really good locations this is uh, something we definitely want to see more of glad to have been able to get a look at this one thanks to the electric circuit and hydro quebec and kempa for getting these installed here and look forward to testing them out in the united states where do you want to see them let us know down in the comments thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one cheers